Mike Varney, you want me to talk about Mike? I'll talk about Mike Varney right now. Mike Varney is the single-handed guy who changed the way guitar was played, what we heard, and uh, how I met him was really weird. It was on MTV. I wasn't on MTV until after I was on his label. But on MTV, there was a guy who, who, uh, J.J. Jackson, remember him, the VJ? He was interviewing Mike Varney for the U.S. Metal compilation, U.S. Metal Volume 2. He had already put one out before, and he was looking for bands with hot guitars. And uh, Mike Varney's a punk rock legend. He was in the band called The Nuns from San Francisco. And uh, when I mentioned that to the pig champion... He was in the nuns. It's like, yeah, so I put them together, and that's how the first Poison Idea album got, uh, first the EP, Pick Your King, how that one got uh, pressed up. And uh, they got to be friends. Mike Varney was always just a really honest guy, and, uh, you know, I think his brother had a label called Guitar Nine also. But these guys were, especially Mike, all the guys that you know that... uh, you know, from Megadeth, uh, Marty Friedman, Tony McAlpine, Greg Howe, um, and the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on. And Ingve Malmsteen. Paul Gilbert and Ingve Malmsteen, I remember them. You know, they were in the same guitar player column. He used to write a, a column for Guitar Player Magazine called Spotlight. And in the same issue, it was Ingve and Paul. And... Uh, I remember him playing me the demo of Ingve on the phone. He used to play me tapes on the phone. My mom still talks about the long distance bill. It was like thousands of dollars. And that was when long distance cost money. You didn't have cell phones that were free. And, uh, <laughs> man, he didn't play me Paul. Well, I think he might have played me Paul's demo, but Ingve, he was really floored with it. It really floored me. And, uh, you know, I, I kept telling him, why do you need singers in these bands and he said well the band's good and the guitar player's good but the singers is i go just go instrumental chick korea jeff beck hey jeff beck out me and all the um john mclaughlin all the great guitar players who are really great guitar players not just a guitar player in some rock band with a long-haired singer they don't need a singer and pretty soon all of the wor- records were instrumental and uh, I'm really happy about that because I like instrumental. Yeah, I'm known as a singer, but I like I prefer instrumental music. Let's see instruments do the talking. Not some guy who does this all the time and you know, look, look at my hair. And uh, I don't need to hear singing. In fact, I like Ingve much better without any singing at all. So, uh, well, Mike, uh, Mike gave me a chance, a huge chance. He. But the Wild Dogs, he said, well, look, you've already got almost a whole album recorded. Why don't we just put your record out? I'll pay for an album cover and the, the mastering and the, and the manufacturing. And he did, and we sold like a whole 700 records. And then we did the next record, and then Jeff's studio just was kind of crap compared to what we could do in, at Prairie Sun. And so we went down and recorded... Uh, album at Prairie Sun and uh, we tried to make it like a Def Leppard record and it really sucked it's a great cover but uh, and I'm responsible for the covers because I'm a photographer and I set the, I didn't take the photo but I set the scene up and I also kind of did that with the first Wild Dogs record that showed us in the black and white leather gear and well the band decided they were going to get rid of me and so they got rid of me and I had recorded a demo of nine songs called Evil Genius, and he liked the songs, but he said, you know, I think you'd be great if you would up the game a little bit, and so I did. Uh, He said, you know, make a real costume. I'll give you some money to buy the stuff to get a real costume made. I actually made the costume myself on Dr. Mastermind. My thumbs still ache from (laughs) making those studs. And I made the the jacket with no pattern. (laughs) It's crazy. It was just meant to be. I got a huge budget. He said, look, if you can get Dean Castanova to play drums, that would be great. Then if I said, well, can you get him a job? And he said, well, I'd like him to play with Tony McAlpine. So, ah, there's a little something more. So he said, we can move him down to the Bay Area on your budget because he's going to give me like $20,000, $30,000. And uh, part of it was to move Dean. 
And so the rest of it went to recording. And uh, I don't know what happened the rest of it. You know, that's, that's the way the record business is. <laughs> so I never got a bill. But the guy that did the basics, Rick McMillan here at the studio in Portland, man, he was just raping us. And I should have known better because he was a friend of Jeff Horton from Wild Dogs. And by just conflict of interest, we could have done that record for half the amount if we just went to California and did it there with him as producer. And uh, the drums would have sounded better. And when we got there, there was no... This is Dr. Mastermind. When we got there and put the tapes on, there was six drums missing. The snare was one of them. But Dean plays so hard. I mean, Dean Casanova, he's amazing. He, uh, he plays so hard that we just sampled the snare from a couple of the overheads, and uh, that seemed to be working out fine. But it would have been a much better sounding record than it does sound. And... Uh, <laughs> yeah, Mike, uh, he had definitely lifted my talent to do heights. In fact, the first night we were there, you know, I'm used to playing jazz basses, basses with small necks, because I don't have giant hands. And uh, he brought this precision bass with EMG pickups, which were brand new at the time. And, uh, you know, I, I love that sound from the first time I heard them. And finally, I got that sound like in 2000, what? 12, when I built my own bass and uh, got a hold of Tommy Armstrong. Hi, Tommy. Thank you. You're awesome. And uh, he put this bass in my hands and said, okay, you're going to play the whole album tonight. And it was like the first time we got there, it's like, what? Yeah. She, he didn't believe I could play that well. So they started off with I Don't Want to Die, which is a, <laughs> it's a pretty bass-intensive song. So after I got warmed up and figured out that Ah, this precision neck is a lot bigger than the ones I'm used to. <laughs> and uh, I just did it, and uh, that's the way it went. Uh, it went to number one in Kerrang! for three months, and uh, like I said, Mike Varney didn't just do this for me. He Mike Varney up the level of everybody that he came across and produced, and um, there were still stories in the studio about when Ingvi and Steeler were there, and uh, the, he used Mike Farney's amp and complained about it. So Kurt James is the guy he finally put me up with. <laughs> he brought a soldering iron and a whole bunch of resistors that he just carries around just to, you know, screw up vintage amps with. <laughs> he likes vintage gear, but it just doesn't have the guts. And so uh, we took Mike Varney's priceless vintage amp apart, and uh, Kurt James said, keep an eye on the door. And Mike never showed up in the daytime anyway, except for this day. And he's putting a new resistor in that was going to add a lot more gain. <laughs> and uh, we got caught. <laughs> That's a pretty funny story about that. So, uh, well, uh, I can't, you know, Mike Varney changed my life and made me somebody. Otherwise, I'd still be a nobody. And uh, I really appreciate him, and I wish him well. And, uh, wow, uh, you know, I'm inspired by his uh, successes and everything he's done. And uh, I was always a little big, so uh, <laughs> he inspired me to lose weight, <laughs> the ride the snake way. But uh, shh, there's a lot of it back then in uh, 1985 and 86. Uh, but uh, <laughs> so I dropped like 60 pounds, much to my chagrin because I like to eat. But uh, there's my story about Mike Varney, and uh, I just kept it kind of short, so uh, there's more. And uh, thank you, and uh, visit usmetal.com. <laughs>